guys, it's Carlos from Daily Care Solutions. I am here at the Artisan Cutlery slash CJRB booth here at SHOT Show 2020. This is actually going to be the one year anniversary of Dylan Mallory's design, the Arkeo, and his CJRB design, the Centros. There's a lot of new stuff that's coming out. I believe he has a new design that he is prototyping here as well as a few other designs and locks that are probably going to be switching things up quite a bit. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and get some in-depth looks at what's going to come up for 2020 and beyond. Alright, so I am here with Russell from Artisan Cutlery Yo. slash CAJ, CJRB. CJRB. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So, there's a couple of new things that you guys would like to show up. Okay. A couple of things. Show me some cool stuff here. Alright, so where do you want to start? High end or low end? Let's start from the top. How about All right. that? So, from the top, the one that's been going around online, the one that's been on our Instagram. First time doing a front flipper, designed by Ray Conico. This is the Centauri. Very nice. Damascus, we have Damascus on this one. We also have S35 VN. Nice contour carbon fiber scale, and we kept it really thin. We tried to make sure this was a nice thin stock blade, and this is just like really comfortable in the hand. Uh, full jimping on top. We actually talked to Ray about doing this. Normally, he likes to have his logo on the top, but instead, we were like, hey, the way this is contoured, it feels great without, but we just want to put a little extra grip on top, so instead, we actually changed and put his logo on the backspacer, which we thought was kind of a cool touch. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, typically, you see something like you mentioned. Uh, a lot of his designs, his signature is is typically putting, uh, you know, the uh, Ray Laconico, mm -hmm. uh, just just you know, a text Ray yeah. Laconico right on here. It's super. You've classic. seen it for some of his customs. You've seen it on some of his production knives. Yeah. This is actually the first one I've ever seen that is not only a front flipper, which is not something he normally does. No, actually. But it's something that he kind of it's kind of off kind of the like beaten path. Yeah. So actually, with this one, um, I was talking with Ray at USN and he brought the custom version of this knife because I talked to him previously about doing a front flipper and he had one that was uh, similar to one of his other knives and he was talking to me, he's like, hey, I don't really want to do it because it looks way too similar to something else I make. Let me see about making a different one. And he made a couple, model, a couple versions of a front flipper and when he brought them to Blade Show, they all just, they sold, just gone. Wow, yeah. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, no, they're great. So I met up with them afterwards and I'm like, hey, that, that kind of like drop point Warncliffe knife, I want it. Can we do it? It's like, sure. Want to do a frame lock? Want to keep it super thin? Sure. And so like three or four bits later, we finally get this down. And on top of that, I have another prototype in pocket. I actually have a small version of this guy. Prototype right now. We're going to see if we can do this one. But it is such a, just a good looking clean knife. Very elegant. Gentlemanly. Let's lay it down right here to see what the difference is in size so people can go ahead and see what go. we're talking about. That's a nice difference, good in, difference in size. size. So this looks like it's a, a, a blade that's under three inches? Yes, exactly 2.9. Nice. By Ray's request. Okay. So oh, it is good. under three inches, unequivocally. That's good. That increases the, the viability of this knife, especially in places where there are blade restrictions around mm -hmm. the U.S. and even outside of the U.S. Yes. Um, I actually, I like the smaller blade because I think that this would make a really good uh, office-friendly EVC. Exactly. I mean, don't get me wrong. The fact is, both of these are extremely thin, but to combine that with, you know, quality steel, a frame lock, you know, just the aesthetics, and then something of this size that can easily be open and closed, I mean, this is this is a no-brainer. And I think that this is gonna, this is gonna hit it out of the ballpark with Artisan. I mean, this is a really nice collaboration. And I guess unlike this one, you said this is a prototype. Yes. That's probably the reason why you'll see Ray's uh, insignia right here on the spine. Yeah. Uh, it says the R Laconico over here. Uh, Maybe you can catch that in the camera. Maybe not. But in any case, that's a really, really nice design. And I'm kind of jealous right now, man. Yeah, I mean, what's yeah, up with that? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, okay. as it goes back in my pocket. Yeah. So we got another new one here. Uh, we released our Hyperion model at Blade Show West last year. And that was a pretty impressively sized knife. Pretty, you know, it, it, it was a little big. And a lot of people wanted a small version of it. In fact, the designer, Daryl Kasten, actually requested a smaller version of the knife as soon as we could. It took us a while to, we had a, we had a couple of production issues with the original Hyperion in terms of the grind and, how, and the construction, but we finally got around to getting a small version of this guy out and it really does feel exceptional in hand. It's designed to be a Lanny or a Barlow, kind of a, a classic American style knife, but with modern materials and kind of a very, kind of, I like being the kind of like a retro future touch, kind of gave it like a, like a pseudo sci-fi name because it is Hyper modern, carbon fiber, titanium, it's got the bolsters, it's got this like way out there clip. 
It's got his rocket motif, and it really, in a small form, is an excellent pocket knife. It just, it feels classic, but it's not. Yeah, you have that classic Bowie style design exactly. almost. Uh, something you would see typically on, you know, your old granddad's American black exactly. lockback knife. Yeah. Uh, it has the fuller, um, you know, you have the titanium, you have it in different colors. You can anodize it, you can get yeah. standard titanium in the black with that carbon fiber. It has the artisan cutlery here on the back spacer, and you have actually a little standoff here that doubles as, uh, I guess, a lanyard yep. or a lanyard insert. And I mean, this is really nice. And I mean, I opened and closed it a few times. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this thing is buttery smooth. This is on bearings, right? Yeah. Well, the thing about this is, this is actually a bolster lock. So if you look on the inside, the carbon fiber is overlaid over the titanium frame. Yeah, so actually, you could probably see it on that one yeah, a little bit better. better than the blue. So if you see that, the frame is on the inside, and the uh, the titanium scale or the carbon fiber scales are external. So it does make the action a little lighter, but it also does keep it kind of quiet. And it is it, it just feels very classy. Yeah, I'm looking at the different styles that you have here. Uh, you know what I was thinking, and, I, and and now that I'm looking at this this standard titanium one, um, these scales. I'm assuming that you you know you uh, unscrew this, you can take off the scale, mm -hmm. and then you can keep going and work on the knife as you're as you're uh, fixing it. Maybe like for a deep clean. What I think that would look really nice is some like black, uh, maybe some linen micarta yeah. or something like that. Kind of possibly switch. Wood. We yeah. Can do diamond wood, we can actually do natural wood. I was thinking, man, this would look great with like a piece of ebony. Yes, I mean, ebony, ebony, something like that. This is a really nice gentleman's knife yeah. that would fit not only, you know, out, out in the woods, if you're using it to kind of, you know, uh, create feather sticks, that sort of thing, or, you know, in the office when you're at a presentation meeting exactly. and you're looking up a fine gentleman's knife, people take out their again, old school. You if know. you look at the clip on this one, uh, Daryl designed this clip specifically for this knife. It is a very distinctive clip in pocket, and it, if you'll also notice, it's blind screwed into the back. So in pocket, it really is just the clip. So it's really classy looking. Like it really just has character without being overbearing. And it's, it's. I personally think it's much better in a small knife form than the big one. The big one's great, but this is just so much better. My personal opinion. Very nice, very nice. And this is called? The Hyperion. The Hyperion. Small, Hyperion. So this is the small Hyperion, new for 2020. Yes. Now is it currently out? Or not is yet. It's still a prototype. Okay. I think it is pretty much ready to go. There are not a lot of changes that we need. We just got to run it by the designer. Perfect. Small Hyperion. Very nice. You got to look out for this one, man. Okay, so I saw this on the table. Yes. And I have to ask you because uh, the last time we ran into Artisan Cutlery, we happened to run into Dirk Pinkerton. Yes, you did. And uh, he, you know, gave us a little bit of a, a spiel on the proponent, which I believe Outer Limitless is doing a hard use test uh, right and now. And how? And yes. how? So, uh, just a shameless promotion. Be sure to go ahead and check that out. So Once good. you're done checking out so all good. of these other these videos. So, oh my God. Um, I can't help but ask, is this a Pinkerton design? That's a Pinkerton design. Guys, that is actually that. the TBD on the name. We're still working on the name. But that is, if you've seen his designs, this one has some similarities to the Razorback fixed blade that he makes. And it has that Dirk Pinkerton uh, insignia right mm -hmm. here. Um, so the thing nice. about this one is this is this is very much a tactical knife. He oh, yeah. designed this to be a handle, he calls it a handle minimized knife. Pretty much you can grip that whole thing and fit it, fit the whole handle in your hand. It's meant to just have blades sticking out and that's it. Super aggressive. I, I guess I'd call it a Tonto, but the way this feels it's in hand. It's got a little bit of belly to it's it. It's got though. some belly too. It's, yeah, it's really yeah. like a slicey tonto. Yeah. I, I, I guess you can almost call it an upswept, not really, or almost a tonto. Either way, it's a sick shape. And the way this sits in the hand really is like if you grip on this, it just holds. If you notice, there's actually some internal jimping right here, as he's done on some of his other knives, yes. along with the uh, internal jimping on this side as well. Backhanded or in reverse grip, this also is a Oh man, that feels aggressive. That does feel pretty <laughs> darn good. But we, there are going to be some tweaks done to it. We might have to change the way, uh, this one has external stop pin, so that's a pretty old school thing to have. I like the character it brings to the knife, but it does need a few adjustments because of where the, the flipper position is. Yeah, I think people would, would misunderstand that as being a thumb stud, yeah. and, and they would not. think, why isn't it activating? Yep. That's actually, just, you know, just, it's an over travel stop. Yeah, it's, it's your stop pin. It's just mm -hmm. a giant honking stop pin. It's such a different knife than the proponent, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very much Dirk. It's very much Dirk's kind of aesthetic. But it's 
it feels small. It is not a small knife, but it feels small. It's compact. I think the it is actually yeah. Here, give this a good gripping hand. Like give it like. I feel a real like you, I, I feel grip. like you get a lot of uh, blade uh, for the size. You do. And, and you see uh, like issues like uh, with a lot of knives that are being released nowadays. That you know you get a lot of uh, handle mm -hmm. to be able to get a nice purchase on the blade. But then the I mean the size uh, of the actual blade and the, the ratio of blade to actual handle it makes it just like an imbalanced knife. Yeah. Um, you get something like this in the hand, and you and you put somebody like Dirk uh, behind the design of something like this, and he's somebody who truly understands knives because he's somebody who truly, under, you know, he he puts the, these designs into practice. So to Dirk see is, something like this is just amazing. Dirk is wonderful to work. He is a fantastic guy, very humble, very nice, and very knowledgeable about this stuff. He's been making knives for a long time. He's worked with a lot of other designers, and Dirk knows a, a thing or two about making handles. Dirk liked his ergos, and I appreciate that. Even his blockiest knives, for some reason, feel amazing. And I'm sitting there going, why does this feel so good? Why does it feel so comfortable in the hand, even though I look at it, it just looks like a slab? I don't know. Dirk, Dirk does handle magic. I, and, I will I will second that. Yeah. And I and I believe also, I mean, regardless of the size of the knife, yeah. Dirk seems to have a way to make it happen. I mean, I've seen some of his stubby yeah. neck, neck, neck uh, knives to something of this and, and maybe even a little larger, and they all just seem to work right. I don't know how he does it, but I guess it's experience. It is. I mean, look at my tiny hands. I can hold that proponent just fine. Dude, what about there? Dude. Tiny, tiny hand bros. Dude, tiny bitch hands. Tiny bitch hands. I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, I got some tiny hands. A proponent fits fine in my hand. I, a knife that a knife that big should not fit in my hands that comfortably. And th a knife this small should not. I, I gave this to some guy who wore who couldn't wear XL gloves. His hands are so big. He said this knife fit perfectly in his hand. I'm sitting there going, how is that even possible? And yet, and yet it somehow works. One thing I like is how here on the backspace, you guys also happen to, yeah. to put on the titanium backspace or the artisan coloring we insignia as well. On there. It's very, very nice. Just, are just machined in flat. That one we just curved around. I thought it was it's very nice. Too. So this is this is also a photo? That is. Okay. Uh, name is TBD. Still work on the name for that guy. I gotta talk with Dirk. I think we had a few things in the pipeline just for names, but the design is gonna be tweaked a little bit. Dirk has had some specific uh, changes he wanted to make, and we're gonna just work with it and see if we can make this better than it currently is. Okay. Now, um, one last thing. Yes. Um, this feels like it is on bearings. It is. Wow, okay. That's pretty interesting because, I mean, from what I've seen with Dirk, he doesn't really like to use, you know, bearings too much. Or maybe he uses washers a little bit more mm -hmm. than bearings. Because I know he's used it in, in the proponent, yeah. um, which was kind of surprising. But, um, I mean, just the action on this, you, you, you can feel it, especially, I mean, yeah. for being Excellent. a prototype, yeah. this is a smooth prototype, guys. I mean, look at this. I'm gonna do it one more time. That's that's some serious. It feels pretty good. Oh yeah, seriously smooth right here. Very yeah. nice. We we're pretty much just set up to put bearings in most of our knives anyway, and we prefer the action of bearings with a flipper. Now we might consider doing washers at some point. We'll see. We just have to kind of retool ourselves and, and you know get to a point where we're able to try out the use of washers. So we'll see. We'll see. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Russ.